The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Hello, welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Our guests today, Leo Treadway and Ben Dykes, are from the organization Lesbian and Gay Youth Together. They'll be talking with me about how this organization serves as a source of support and opportunity for young gays and lesbians. Leo, Ben, delighted to have you with us today on All About Kids. Let's talk a little bit about the program you're both involved in, Lesbian and Gay Youth Together. Leo, how about a, a description of the program, some of the outreach sorts of things you're doing, and then we'll talk to you about your involvement, Ben. Well, a, a quick overview for it. The group has been around uh, seven, going on eight years now. We've probably had well over a thousand teenagers who have gone through the program, both young men and young women. The age range is um, about 15 to 21 plus, um, mostly by the time um, teenagers or, well, young people are moving into the 20s, they're getting into other kinds of programs in the community. We've had some um, young people as young as 13 or 14 who have called to get information on the group. group meets every Sunday. Um, we've been doing that for, for seven years now, and attendance is anywhere from about 20 to 40 kids. Why did you start something about this? How did you identify the need in the community? Well, I think that amongst gay and lesbian people, we have all remember what it was like for us. Um, when I began uh, working our wingspan ministry at St. Paul Reformation, uh, we began to have contact from a number of teenagers who were desperately looking for some place to connect and uh, wanting to know what, what was around. At that time, there really wasn't anything. And so a process began uh, not initially with us, but we certainly participated in, in some of the things that gave rise to what is now Lesbian and Gay Youth Together. What was your reaction from people? Did they go crazy? Did they say you're out there recruiting kids? Uh. Um, I think we thought there would be some reaction like that. There really has not been any, um, or at least if there has, they haven't bothered to tell us about it. Uh, mostly, um, we were a good idea and I think everybody realized that and once we started uh, talking about the group and what the group did, it's a social support group, it's not a counseling group, it meets weekly, it provides an opportunity for gay, lesbian, bisexual teenagers to meet other teenagers like themselves. Uh, it all made perfect sense to people and we've had uh, I think a great deal of, of positive response from organizations and agencies who are um, glad that there is a program like ours that exists in the place that they can refer kids. Do you do referrals for young people who are involved to other agencies that social service that they might? Sure, some of the the teenagers that come to the group uh, may be having family difficulties or some uh, counseling kinds of concerns and there's a whole network of uh, people and agencies we connect them with. Uh, sometimes there are housing issues um, a number of gay and lesbian teenagers simply get thrown out of their home uh, and have no place to go. And there's a number that have connected with our group that have been in that situation when they arrive or very, very shortly thereafter if they come out to their family. Ben, how did you get involved? In how did you find out that there was this kind of a group available? Well, when I was a senior in high school, um, I came out to myself and realized that I was gay. And it was shortly after that that I found a pamphlet from Leo's group in the school library. And so that Wonderful. gave me the idea. <laughs> yes, and that that gave me the idea um, to call up and you know see when it met and kind of reassure myself that it was okay because I think you you can't underestimate the feelings of loneliness and desperation that a lot of young gay and lesbian and bisexual kids feel uh, because there's the feeling that you're the only one that no one understands you and so that's why groups like Leo's are so important. Must take quite a bit of courage though, not only to come out to yourself but 
to come out to other students and teachers, parents? Well, yes. Um, when, I, when I first went to Leo's group, I had a, a grin plastered on my face during the whole period because I was so nervous, and that was my way of coping with that. Um, but it's gotten easier once you come out to more people. Um, Do you find easier that, easier. that other young people that, that meet you and find out you're involved in a group like this will ask you about it and are, are willing to say to you, well, I think I'm gay or I know I'm gay and, and can you help me deal with it? Yeah, a lot of them are genuinely interested if they're not gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Um, and then a number of people will come out to you afterwards um, once they reassure themselves that you know, you're for real and you're not dangerous to, you know, their, to the secrecy that they surround themselves with. And so they will come out to other young people and say, hey, you know, how can I get involved in this group and can I come? And you find that it's sort of a demystification. The more mm -hmm. everybody understands about each other, the less... Well, it becomes, it, it becomes a more normalized process. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about how gay and lesbian bisexual people survive, we survive by being invisible. Mm -hmm. And the more effective we are with that, the more difficult it is we're even going to connect with one another. And so it, it's an interesting experience for teenagers who come to the group and are a part who then suddenly meet some teenagers from their own school there. Uh, other, other kids who are gay or lesbian that were totally unknown to them before. Well, and that's what happened to you, isn't it? Exactly. Dan? You met somebody um, that you recognized vaguely? I, I went to Leo's group one day and there was uh, a young man from school that I knew, sort of, uh, and he invited me to come with and talk to some of the counselors and administrators at my school, which is South High in Minneapolis, um, and see about starting a group there. And it was for the reasons of you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of young people hurting and feeling lonely that we decided to start a group in the high school, which has been going since uh, spring of 1990. So this was a student-generated group that mm -hmm. had faculty support, that had yep. administrative support, and I assume parental support, too? Yes, and it was around that time that uh, a similar type group at St. Paul Central started as well. And there was a lot of parental support, a lot of administrative support. It really is unique what's happened here in Minnesota. There are a number of other groups around the country. Um, many of them conform to sort of the model we describe for lesbian and gay youth together. They sort of exist out there as a free independent group. Uh, there's not a lot of things that are based in schools. There is Project 10 uh, out in Los Angeles, uh, and it functions both as a group like LGYT and as a kind of educational program uh, for school professionals. But it serves the entire district. And what we have developing here in Minnesota is the group at South, which mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes perfect sense that there would be a support group for gay and lesbian bisexual students in a high school like South or in Central High School in, in St. Paul um, that is supportive of them just as you have all kinds of other programs that are supportive of, of students. Well, that's what your, your button represents, the, the pink triangle hug. Right. The, um, this, this button has an interesting genesis. This was not a button uh, that initially came out of the gay lesbian community, although it uses one of our symbols. Uh, the students at Central High School um, had a progressive student organization that was much of the leadership of the school, and they really wanted to be supportive of this, this new program um, and support gay and lesbian students and help them connect with it and that sort of thing. Now these are basically heterosexual kids, uh, leaders in the school, and they decided that they needed to have some kind of physical show of support. In that sense, they developed this button. They started wearing it, it caught on, it became the trendy thing to do. Even the faculty and staff started wearing it. I mean, so you know that it was, was really kind of trendy at that point. Which is really incredible to see so many um, young heterosexual allies because you know, that's in the time when homophobia really gets to be the strongest in high school when you're trying to fit in and everything. Well, I think everybody is so uncertain of their sexuality <laughs> exactly. at that age. And that was, I, I wanted to ask you about that because as a children's librarian, we work with, with children of all ages and young people and a lot of the words that are used are very hurting words, queer or fag, and you hear it from, from little mm -hmm. kids in, in preschool story times sometimes. Even children who obviously don't know the the expanded meaning of that. What kind of advice do you have for adults who work with children or for parents about how to help kids understand that those words are considered insults by many people, that they're words that are very painful, especially if you are a gay young mm -hmm. person and you hear like your, your peers talking minute, about uh, that? I, I think that 
kids in school may not know exactly what those words mean, mm -hmm. but they do know that those words hurt. Right. Just like there are some other words that hurt around um, racial minorities or, or that sort of thing. Uh, I think it's a sad commentary that gay and lesbian people, certainly gay and lesbian students, uh, are an acceptable minority to beat up on, yeah. either verbally or, mm -hmm. or physically. I mean, some of the stories that uh, teenagers have told us when they come to the group are, are just grueling. I mean, they would, they would curl your hair. So I think there is a, an awareness that these are hurtful words, and yet it's okay to, to use them, and that's part of, of course, what we want to challenge. And that is exactly what's focused upon when we do trainings and things like that, because you concentrate on the fact that we don't use racial slurs because they hurt, and the only reason that words like faggot and queer are used is because it's socially acceptable. And so when we draw the parallels, then we can understand that these words hurt and especially since you don't know who in the class mm -hmm. is gay, lesbian, mm -hmm. or bisexual because of the secrecy. Or who's on the staff or the faculty. Or the staff That's or the true. faculty. Um, it really makes you aware of you could be hurting your best friend. Part of the way that we've dealt with that is to try and change the context. Now, again, going back to the notion that the way gay and lesbian people survive is to be invisible. Uh, you don't see gay and lesbian people. You don't hear about them. You don't read about them in books primarily, that, that sort of thing. Um, we decided that it would be important to have posters that began to raise the issues and, and break through this membrane invisibility. The first one we developed uh, was just uh, really a very simple project in response to a request from teachers in St. Paul uh, to have something that they could hang up that would raise the issue, that would identify them as knowing something about it, uh, as being supportive, and the students could connect with them. So we put together when we had literally hundreds of people involved in the editing um, process for, th for this first one has the big banner headline, what do you do, your best friends just said to you I'm gay, and then offer some, some helpful questions and some information. So it's basically uh, a poster designed to give you a lot of information. Really in a 20 second bite we, we would time people walking past it to see how much they could read. Um, one of the things that was suggested to us in follow up was we ought to do another poster. We ought to do a series of posters, and they ought to have um, role model, positive role models as a focus. We thought about doing one, the first uh, gay astronaut or the first lesbian chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, or you know something <laughs> like that, and decided that that really was not what we wanted to do. The what what gay, lesbian, bisexual kids needed was positive images at each stage of life, and so the first one we started out with, which actually stars Ben in a, <laughs> in a younger day, um, it kind of picks up on uh, junior high school age, it picks up on the theme of attraction, attraction between people, and it's, uh, it's a very different kind of poster from the first one. These have um, really been far more successful than we would ever have thought. They are in area schools, they're in churches. We've had requests from them from all over the country and from Europe people who have heard about this somehow and written to us and want to get copies of oh, it. They're, they're wonderful and they are, it's a peer sort of thing. It's something definitely appealing to young people. And again, the more those sorts of things are available for all students to look at, the it more... It does do something it, to change the climate right, and it also image. identifies that this is an issue that people in this school or this church mm -hmm. know about and if it's in your office, it identifies you as a, as a mm -hmm. resource that somebody can talk to. As a safe to. person. A safe mm -hmm. person to talk to. That's uh, just a little bit off the track, the whole mouthful of words, the, the gay, lesbian, transvestite, is there ever going to be sort Trans, of a common... Transgender. Transgender, I'm sorry. Uh, that was a big faux pas. <laughs> um, is there going to be a single inclusive word, do you think? Or I is think, there discussion of that? I think there may be. I, th I think that that needs to evolve. Right now there is a, a major discussion going on within the gay lesbian community um, and the bisexual community about whether uh, gay lesbian pride should also include the word bisexual. There are people who are arguing that, that it should because uh, we want to be inclusive of um, everyone. There are other people who are saying it's uh, um, and the celebration of an event that's specific to the history of gay and lesbian people, but we want to open that to uh, bisexual people. There's others who are saying that um, we ought to come up with a different term altogether. That what we're really celebrating is our ability to come out and claim who we are, 
Um, and whether you're gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender doesn't make any difference. There's a kind of broader overarching theme. So I don't know how that's going to sort itself out. Um, but the issues engaged now will be interesting to see where we get to in June 1992. Maybe the issue will be resolved then. Ben, I'd like to, you mentioned several times the loneliness of, of mm -hmm. being a gay teenager. and. Um, do you think that a lot of the teen suicides that we read about, which never mention sexuality, mm -hmm. actually happen to kids who are thinking about their own sexuality or having a sexual identity crisis? Or do you think just loneliness? Well, as a matter of fact, there have been a number of respected studies that have shown conclusively that a high percentage, a uh, very disproportionate percentage of young gay, lesbian, and bi people um, commit suicide, of, of attempted suicides, of um, successful suicides. So there have been two different types of polls that have been taken, of people in the gay, lesbian, bi community that have attempted it, and looking at circumstances around successful suicides, attempted suicides, um, to the extent that 30% of young, gay, lesbian, bi people attempt mm -hmm. suicide at one time. And so that is a very disproportionate amount when you're talking about 10% of a population being gay, lesbian, or bi. So that's the, the, the rate of risk, I think, for gay and lesbian people around things like suicide or chemical abuse or other kinds of emotional mm -hmm. difficulties is about three times what it is for the general population. That's not surprising. People who are rabidly anti-gay will use things like that and say, well, they're sick. I mean, they're as sick as we've always said. But if you really look at that data, and understand what a burden it is to hide a major part of yourself. You have this enormous secret mm -hmm. that you are afraid people will discover and then um, horrible things can happen to you. You get thrown out of your family, you lose your job, you get beaten up. I mean again some of the stories we've heard from people in the group who've been beaten up at school, had their lockers trashed, that sort of thing, and in some cases faculty and staff stand by and you know do do nothing about that so there's a price uh, that you pay if you come out there's also a price you pay if, if you stay hidden if you stay in the closet as it were and that's this this three times rate mm -hmm. so groups like the lesbian gay youth together groups, are really positive to help groups like LGYT really do help because then you you walk into the room and all of a sudden you see you know as mm -hmm. many as 30 or 50 other people like you they look like you, they dress like you, they talk like you, and it's really an, ex an astounding experience um, for a young person because here they are thinking that their whole life that they're alone in this, that they have to hide this, and here they are together with and a number of people just like them. And seeing a lot of negative stereotypes in the media and, mm -hmm. and thinking, well, that's not me, mm -hmm. and realizing that yeah, these that are ordinary folks. Right. That, that's the unfortunate thing, that if you um, look to the media generally to try and get some understanding of what it means for you to be gay or lesbian or bisexual and you're in your teenage years, most of what you see is pretty negative. And you put that on top of uh, the sense of needing to hide and to protect yourself from all this harassment and, and potential violence out there. Uh, it's a wonder anybody survives. Uh, it, it is incredible to see teenagers come to the group, sometimes who look and act very depressed and almost low and within everything. the process of one meeting you'll see dramatic change. I mean, it's, this is an overly simplistic example, but it's like walking around with a rock in your, your shoe, and when you know, somebody helps you take the rock out, you're off and you're running and skipping. And, I mean, that, that's really what, it, what it's like. You kind of get back on the track, and you realize this is who you are. There's other people like you. Mm -hmm. um, your life well, can be friends. happy. Well, and friends. I mean, yeah. young well, yes. people, everyone yes. needs friends. You don't necessarily even need to get into a relationship, but mm -hmm. just have friends that are... That's so important for And it's not something that people. just needs to happen once a week, but you make those friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they become part of your daily sure. life. Sure, and you can go to the show and you can go to the Right. One of the things that's exciting, that again, coming back here with a little bit of pride in Minnesota, is that there are lots of discussions going on now about some expanded programming for gay and lesbian teenagers. Uh, I mean, there's things that have begun to happen. There are about six groups in this area now. We've really only focused on a couple, LGYT and the one in uh, South Wells, the one Central too. There's, there's some other groups. There are people that are talking about doing um, additional programming. Uh, we're now looking at the issue of how do we provide adult role models, positive role models for 
um, gay and lesbian bisexual teenagers for whom a group thing doesn't work, uh, a, a more one-on-one -on -one companion mentor kind of program. There's people who are talking about outdoor experiences that help build self-esteem and confidence and, and that sort of stuff. Um, when I travel to other parts of the country to sometimes consult with groups about getting a youth program started there and I start talking about what's happening here, uh, people just look at me in disbelief. They, they simply cannot imagine that there is this flurry of activity and that somehow we have not been uh, attacked for doing all this. We're very fortunate to live yeah. where we do. Yeah. Minnesota is a good state. You're doing yeah. a lot of work with parents and other adults then in the community to help focus on this whole I don't but, want to use the word issue because it's not, well it is an issue. It is, yeah, it, it, it is it, an issue. It's a complex set of issues that, that interrelate. I think that there is probably less connection with parents through LGYT than we would like but that's also very understandable. Most of the teenagers are just beginning to come out to themselves. They're not yet ready to deal with their parents. Part of what we see ourselves doing is helping move them to that point where they can deal with their well, families. Well, most teenagers communicate very little with their parents anyway. Mm -hmm. And we have that difficulty. Right, yeah, that, that on top else. of that. But sure. yeah, a lot of people lie about where they're going You know, every Sunday You know, when they're really going to LGYT. Um, because, well, they could say church. Sure. <laughs> that would probably seem even more surprising to people. But it, I mean, there, there are some realities like that that we work with. They're not exactly what we would like in the best of all possible worlds. Um, but our commitment is to providing uh, a safe, supportive environment for gay and lesbian, bisexual teenagers where they can come to an understanding of who they are. And we've had uh, some kids who've gone through that and decided that, no, who I am I think is really heterosexual. And that's fine. I mean, we wish them well. They go on, they connect with some other groups and programs. But they still can maintain friendships. Sure, and, certainly. Yeah, sure. But our, our commitment is, and I, I think we see it as a real endorsement of that, that people feel so comfortable and so supportive that they don't feel pressured to be gay identified or lesbian identified or that sort of thing. And in fact, we, we've given them the place to deal with some of those questions for themselves. And with this kind of, of education and experience, that's going to diffuse a whole issue for society when we just accept people mm -hmm. or who they are. That's, do you, you mentioned training, Ben. Do you mm -hmm. do any kind of workshops in schools? Would you go into a school, for instance, that had invited you and have a couple of, of young people and then an adult who might be there to facilitate or add just to kind of talk about this in front of the entire mm -hmm. student body so that... In fact, I've, I've, done, I've done that before with Leo many times. Um, we've gone to different high schools in Minneapolis. Um, we went to a nurses, a school nurses convention, a state school nurses convention in, I guess that was the spring of mm -hmm. 90, or spring of 91. Spring 91. Um, that sort of thing happens a lot, talking about AIDS prevention, talking about just homosexuality, uh, in a lot of school settings. Mostly I think the, the uh, audiences are very receptive. This mm -hmm. is not exactly a new issue for them. I mean, if you talk with teachers or school professionals, most of them have known um, a young person at some point they thought was gay or lesbian or maybe had come out to them, but didn't know what to do, didn't mm -hmm. know where to turn in the school even for help. So we're, I think we're tapping an issue that people have wrestled with without having any sort of resource or encouragement or support in dealing with that. And so when they hear about our program or some of the other programs that are around, when we do these educational things, and you were right in placing the emphasis, Ben goes and does these things and Leo sort of goes along as an afterthought, <laughs> which is precisely how it should be. I mean, these folks learn much more from hearing from, from teenagers from the than, than from adults. What are you doing now? You're out of high school? I'm out of high school. I graduated in spring of 90 and now I'm involved with the university gay community at the University of Minnesota. Um, that's primarily where my emphasis is right now, doing programming for that and trying to deal with campus issues. Are you studying? Yes, I am studying. I, I do manage to find a little <laughs> bit of time every once in a while to study. What are you going to, to major study. in, or have you decided? Um, perhaps humanities. I think that that's okay. probably very appropriate for the kind of work that I'm interested in, and the kind of things that I do. Because this looks like something that's going to give you some real good experience in I think so. an adult career or profession. And it is really rewarding to be helping young people like this. Um, because as Leo said, every, all gay, lesbian, bi people right, remember when they were little what it was like. and the issues and the circumstances are basically the same for everyone. It only varies in degrees. 
And when you can bring people out and help them accept themselves and love themselves, that's a really rewarding part. Actually, Ben has been very modest. He's going to kill me for saying this, but he is one of our success stories. I mean, if you had asked, if you had asked me um, what I would want from kids, it would be that they could come to an understanding of who they are in terms of their sexual orientation, become comfortable with that, that becomes an integrated part of who they are, and a part of their life experience that they carry on in a variety of ways, which is exactly what Ben and some of the other people in the youth group have done. And they're so young. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Which, but that's, that's exactly what you would ex expect and hope for, for young people in general, that they come to an understanding. I mean, there's a sense of wholeness and integration, and that's what they move through life with. That's mm -hmm. their strength. It's not just something that they're struggling with or kind of gets put on a shelf over here. Uh, it really becomes uh, an important part of who they are. And help put their whole life in perspective. Well, sure, the self-confidence to be a leader and to be confident mm -hmm. in your own, your own self. That's a kind of a good ending. We've got just a couple of seconds left. Do you have anything that you want to say to our viewers? That a final statement? I, I guess the only thing that I would say um, that we recognize there are lots of gay and lesbian bisexual teenagers out there who still don't know about the groups, have not seen the posters, those sorts of things, and that if they wanted uh, a supportive person to talk to about this, we'd encourage them to call the Gay Lesbian Community Action Council helpline. And we will that, put that, that number on the screen okay. at the end of the program. Yeah. That will that will be a major route in, into the group. To make the effort right. to find those resources mm -hmm. that are available. Finding resources, check your public library yes. is one place <laughs> to do it. That's a good note to end on. Thank you both very much for joining us on Thank All you About Kids. Thank you. Thank you, Leo Treadway and Ben Dykes, for joining us on All About Kids. And thanks to all of you. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.